my name is Jimmy. I am uh, a PM here at Unstoppable. And I say I have the best job <laughs> probably at Unstoppable because uh, I run the developer tools team. And what that means is I get to spend a lot of time uh, talking to folks uh, in the crypto community, talking to devs, and essentially just getting their thoughts on you know, Unstoppable, how we can better uh, provide value for them and how we can build tools in order for them to more easily use our decentralized domains. Uh, so happy to be here. And I'm going to uh, quickly talk about two things in my time here. Uh, one is I'm going to talk about a little bit of the vision of Unstoppable, uh, which, you know, given that I'm going after uh, my friends over at Handshake and, and ENS, uh, a very similar vision in terms of decentralized naming space. Uh, and the second thing is I'm actually going to talk about how browsers can get more involved in Unstoppable and actually use these decentralized uh, domains in order to uh, browse websites and a slew of other use cases. So, uh, yeah, just going to start a little bit about the vision. Uh, and, you know, how do we kind of think about onboarding the world in a decentralized web? That's kind of the, the mandate of, of what's happening in our company. Uh, and it really starts with a, a pretty broad problem statement, uh, which is around, you know, when you think about the internet, uh, when it was really trying to shape up in the early 90s, uh, it was kind of the Wild West, a lot around uh, the ideas of, of being open and being permissionless, uh, you know, designing protocols like HTTP, uh, uh, TCP, IP, and, 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 and the such, um, you know, thinking about how we can do composability and sharing information in a really permissionless way. Uh, and flash forward 30 years, you know, a, a lot is, is honestly changed. Uh, and uh, this isn't exactly the, the internet that uh, was envisioned when we tried to create it in the early 90s. Uh, and so, you know, users don't really own their data. Uh, you know, there's censorship as a result of it because these companies own it. And as a result, there's not a lot of composability. Uh, and so that's actually a super big issue. And uh, really, uh, it needs to be addressed if we want to open up the next wave of, of innovation, the internet uh, with Web3. And so when we think about how our users don't own their, uh, their information, uh, I like to pull up this, this funny cartoon that I saw in The Economist uh, a couple of years back, uh, where it's essentially, you know, these large tech companies mining our data. Right? And that's because the, the, these companies, these applications, uh, they, they, they own our data, right? And so uh, we are not, uh, you know, the users, we are definitely the product. You know, the more we use their free services, uh, the, the more information they can have to sell to their true users, which are, which are advertisers. Uh, and that's kind of a, a really sad kind of dystopian like uh, view of the world where uh, we're, we're essentially like batteries for these companies, right? Kind of like the matrix, uh, but more of a, more of a, in a data kind of digital sense. Um, and then when we think about uh, what that means when companies own our data, uh, that means they could do literally whatever they want with it, right? Uh, and uh, as a result, you know, when I look at the 4.7 billion people that use the internet, um, they're using it at the permission of these companies, uh, which is which is crazy, cr pretty crazy to think about. Like we are only uh, able to use the internet as it re as it relates to the rules of of these companies. Uh, and so I'm I'm actually pretty involved on Twitter, as is I'm sure many uh, and many folks in the crypto space. Uh, and I actually. Uh, I actually got flagged because I liked too many tweets. They're like, hey, like you look like a bot. You liked you like things too much. Like we're gonna, you can't like things for the next three days. And I was like, wow, like that's that's actually ridiculous. Like I can't be passionate about liking things uh, on Twitter because uh, Twitter thinks that uh, that is uh, that's bad behavior. Uh, and so when you think about like a centralized internet, uh, that ultimately leads to a lot of counterparty risk, right? Like what I mentioned with Twitter, uh, but it can get a lot worse than that. And so. Uh, last year, we saw uh, you know GoDaddy employees get fished, uh, and the end result uh, that led to a DNS attack to a couple of crypto companies. Uh, one of them, Liquid.com, uh, and so that was like you know not something that a crypto company which champions decentralization ever thought would ever happen, right? But that's kind of the the exposure that you have when you're using a a, a domain system that that resolves in DNS and that's owned by a centralized company like Verisign that owns .com, um, and then similarly, you know, an Iranian uh, news station just a couple of weeks ago. I actually got taken down by the US, even though you know it's, it's an Iranian news station, they have absolutely nothing to do with the US, but they use a .com domain. And so the US could have, uh, you know, they, they went to kind of the, the true owners of those domains and said, hey, shut it down. We think this Iranian news site is actually spreading fake news, uh, which is pretty crazy because I'm pretty sure this Iranian news site never thought this would happen, that the US government could, uh, could take down their website, but it's, it's definitely the case. Uh, and so how do we kind of stop this? Uh, how do we really, uh, you know, achieve the, the vision of, of Web 1.0 that we wanted to do 30 years ago. Uh, and, and that's through decentralized web, right? How do we make it permissionless? How do we make it self-custody? How do we make it censorship resistant? Uh, it's a really good vision, but like, how do you actually do that tactically? Uh, and, and that's kind of where Unstable Domains comes in. Uh, and we, we really believe that domain systems uh, that are minted on uh, the blockchain 
are tr like a true gateway and a true foundation to Web 3.0. Uh, and so something that's you know user custody uh, that someone could just own these domains. And when when you want to resolve it, it doesn't actually go to a centralized DB like what happens with .com and DNS. Uh, but actually, it, it's it's a uh, it's a decentralized registry that lives on you know some sort of a decentralized virtual machine like uh, Ethereum in, in our case that we built on. Uh, and so uh, what do you do with, with domains uh, in order to build this completely new internet? Uh, well, the short answer is you can do a lot with it, uh, but the three things that we've kind of been building as a company, uh, and I can talk more about the, you know, what other people can build going forward, uh, uh, but we're, we're building three things. And so we're building uh, a use case for decentralized websites. Uh, you can use it for crypto payments. And of course, you can use it for uh, kind of this broad bucket of decentralized identity, which a lot of my, uh, a lot of my colleagues today, uh, here today at the workshop we're kind of talking about. Uh, and so xerxgym.crypto is my domain name that uh, is minted into uh, the Unsubble Domains uh, registry smart contract on Ethereum. And uh, I do all three of these things. So uh, really awesome. And I own it. And uh, yeah, I, I love it a lot. Um, and so what does it mean to create a decentralized website? Uh, and so you know, it's not just with a domain and that's why I think we have such a good partnership with Protocol Labs is uh, it needs to be a full stack, right? And so the domain is important, but what you resolve is, is equally as important. And so a lot of our developers choose to use our domains, but also use to choose uh, some sort of uh, backend hosting solution or they use to choose, or they, they use slash choose uh, IPFS in order, to, in, in order to host that content. And so we have dApps uh, like Kyber who have kind of like a light version uh, of their website that are running unstoppable. Uh, we've also built a, a slew of kind of no code tools to kind of bring in mass adoption uh, for decentralized websites. And so we have an NFT gallery that reads your MetaMask or whatever non custodial wallet and displays the NFTs that you have there. And we also have a bunch of blog templates. And so, uh, you know, kind of like how WordPress uh, really uh, led the way for this uh, slightly no code version for, for websites, we're trying to do that for, for decentralized websites as well. And also, you know, they, they make payments easy, uh, as I'm sure uh, a lot of people have experienced uh, these kind of long alphanumeric strings uh, for uh, your ETH address or for whatever kind of uh, layer one uh, crypto address that you have is, is like really confusing. And so to be able to abstract that into something as easy as your xgem.crypto, uh, that's a huge help for people and, and definitely going to bring in more adoption of folks who want to use cryptocurrencies for payments. Uh, and here's an example of, of how that's happening in, in one of uh, the wallets that have integrated with us. Uh, and so, uh, it, you know, you can buy an unsolvable domain on our website. Uh, we have a pretty, uh, pretty kind of full featured experience that you can do in order to search any domain that you want. Uh, we actually recently just launched uh, brand new TLDs. Uh, so we launched eight new ones, uh, you know, .x, .mt, .dow are personally my favorites, uh, but we have a whole slew for anyone that's interested. Um, but I, I think what's really cool is that uh, it's not just us that's doing it. Like anyone could really tap into, uh, tap into uh, kind of this um, kind of like domain reseller uh, process. And so this is an example of my Ether wallet. They have connected uh, to it, and so any one of their users can go. They can go to uh, the uh, my Ether wallet app store, and they could purchase uh, Jimmy One Two Three Crypto and if they wanted to uh, natively on their app. And so that's something I'm really proud of, not just us doing it, but getting other people uh, involved and in, in tapping into this uh, new wave of decentralization. Um, yeah, and uh, we have uh, you know, <laughs> some numbers here, uh, over a million domains that we've uh, offered. Uh, like what Dietrich mentioned, we work with Opera, work with Brave, and so really happy to have uh, over 300 million potential browsers uh, that could be viewing uh, these, these decentralized websites. Uh, we have uh, over 50 apps uh, that are supporting us. And so that's something that I'm personally really proud of as a PM of the DevTools team. Uh, yeah, and you know, a lot of these names that uh, you're pretty familiar with. So yeah, now is the right time for blockchain domains. Again, censorship is at an all-time high. Uh, sorry, uh, loss of trust in, in institutions at all-time high uh, with things like internet censorship and with things like, uh, like not the lack of ownership of data. Uh, and so I, I love to end with this quote uh, from uh, Brewster, who's the founder of Internet Archive, saying, uh, let's lock the web open for, uh, for good, uh, because uh, what was founded in Web.0 was an awesome vision that got, kind of got uh, mutated a little bit uh, in Web 2.0 with these centralized big tech companies. But we, with crypto, uh, uh, can uh, kind of unlock it again and, and keep it unlocked. So that's something that I'm really proud of uh, being a part of Unstoppable. Um, cool. And so uh, now down to the, the brass tacks, uh, how browsers can actually 
use Unstoppable, right? Like here's this lofty vision, uh, how you guys can get involved. Um, so the, the, the core kind of use case that we have for, for browsers is uh, basically just domain resolution. And so here you'll see uh, GIF slash GIF uh, for, uh, for Brave, uh, where you, know, you can enter into uh, brad.crypto, which is a, a NFT gallery that Brad Cam, our founder, uh, or a co-founder has. And then we also have Kyber Network's uh, light website on kyber.crypto, so you can see their decks there. Um, and so that's kind of like the end output that uh, a lot of browsers can do in order to uh, build uh, and get access to the uh, decentralized web that Unstoppable Domains is building towards. Uh, and so now uh, I'm going to go through a quick walkthrough and demo. And so uh, the demo gods were not super kind to of me today. So my environment, uh, I, I wasn't able to set up my environment properly. So what I'm actually going to do with you is, uh, you know, kind of step in the shoes of a new dev, like what uh, he or she would need to do in order to actually uh, integrate uh, their browser for domain resolution with Unstoppable. Uh, and then I'm actually going to show you the, the source code of, of what I was going to run and kind of show you a, a really, really just like lightweight way of doing domain resolution, uh, just to show you that you can do it in you know five, 10 minutes if you really wanted to. Cool. And so uh, in order to do that, uh, let's have a new dev, just go on unstoppabledomains.com to our homepage and just go to our doc site. Uh, and then when you're here, uh, you can kind of have this like um, open, like this uh, kind of like, what do you call it, uh, landing page uh, that can help you like achieve the objectives you want to achieve with your documentation. So if you want to learn more, if you want to add it for payments, uh, in this case, uh, we are web browsers and we want to support uh, domain resolution for Unstoppable. So I'll click this hyperlink here. Cool. Uh, and then uh, I'm a JF developer, so I'm just going to go to our resolution library and go to our Git repo. Uh, and uh, this README is going to be really, really hands-on. Uh, we work really hard to ensure it's pretty easy for folks uh, to ensure how you can set up your environment, download dependencies, and also just run a few sample commands in order to actually um, actually resolve domains in your browser. Uh, and so the first thing is first, uh, you want to look up just you know uh, any sort of crypto address. And so uh, this code right here is, is pretty simple in terms of um, allowing you to see if uh, you can already do uh, resolutions uh, with uh, some sample kind of uh, ensemble domains that we have. And so here you can see that we have some examples on ETH, on Zill, and also if you want to do multi-currency, like for Tether, you can resolve that as well. Uh, secondly, uh, most importantly for browsers, oops, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, you, you, you want to find the IPFS hash. And so if you're a dev and you want to host some content uh, on, um, uh, on IPFS and uh, be able to access it through uh, ensemble domains, uh, this is a way for you to uh, hit a uh, domain and actually be resolved, have it resolved into an IPFS hash. And so uh, this is the code right here that you just copy and paste. And so right here, if you want to run that function, uh, if you want to do homecakes.crypto, uh, actually, we even have a console log here that shows you that uh, it's, this is the hash it's going to return. And this is actually how you, uh, you, this is how you actually use the hash in order to view content. Uh, and so that's it's super straightforward. That's like literally all you need. Uh, if you wanted to do something that was uh, a little bit more um, bespoke, like you can run a clam, uh, sorry, a command line interface, or you can actually read it directly from Ethereum if you're more proficient in uh, peering with Infura and reading from the blockchain. Uh, but we try to make it as simple as possible for anyone that just wants to hack together, like in call it like five minutes or so. Um, and one thing that I wanted to flag is, uh, so what we do in, in, our, uh, in this uh, Git readme is that you can uh, essentially just resolve domain names to IPFS hashes, uh, but you don't actually return a website yet. And so there's kind of three ways that you can use this code, actually return an IPFS hash and have that hash actually turn into a content that you can view on a web browser. And so one of the ways is you can literally just add uh, this uh, gateway URL and append the hash to it. And so if you go to brad.crypto, you can see here that that's literally what we did. So we went to this IPFS gateway and just appended uh, the IPFS hash. Um, the second way you can do it is uh, if you want to do more programmatically, you can just go into the IPFS docs and go to their gateway. Uh, and then you can use a variety of other uh, gateways that are using outside of their public one. Uh, and then lastly, if you want even more security and more kind of programmability, you can go to the IPFS JS uh, Git repo. Again, this is if you're using our resolution JS library, uh, and then you can have a lot more customization. 
Uh, and so that is essentially uh, as easy as, as you need uh, for any developer who uh, has a browser that wants to add domain resolution for unstoppable domains. Uh, and so lastly, uh, what I'm going to show you guys is just a really quick code example uh, that we hacked together in literally less than 15 minutes. Uh, and just to show you that, you know, nothing pretty, but this is a really, really easy way for you to add domain resolution for your browser. And so you can see here, we just have a very standard React boilerplate here for TypeScript. Um, and then we're also, uh, you know, importing this uh, unstoppable, bleh, this unstoppable domains resolution library. Uh, you can see here that we're essentially just having uh, a, a function that inputs some sort of uh, some sort of uh, arbitrary string, and then it's actually pretty interesting because um, in the example that I gave in the docs readme, uh, that mainly resolves an IPF, IPFS hash, but we can also resolve DNS records uh, with uh, with our domains. And so here in this code, you can see that we're actually resolving uh, either a DNS record or you can also do an IPFS hash. Uh, and then finally, you're just showing that record. And so if it's DNS, you need to show this JSON blob. Uh, if, it's an, if it's a hash, uh, you can just show it as a string. Uh, and I wish I could run it, but the demo gods hate me today. Uh, but hopefully, if you've seen the code, you can see that this is literally as hacky and as easy as you can to do domain resolution. So hopefully, people can participate. Um, cool. And then uh, I know I'm a little bit over time, so I'll just end with uh, a few slides here. And so one is just highlighting our bounties. And so any browser that wants to integrate on supple domains uh, will give out $2,000 uh, per winner. Uh, and then anyone that wants to use just an unstoppable domain for your project. So let's say you're not a browser, you don't want to do a domain resolution like what I just listed. You just want to get a crypto domain, uh, a dot crypto domain, and you want to uh, host your app uh, through IPFS through this domain. Uh, we'll give people $100 in store credits. Uh, cool. So that is it. Uh, thanks. And if you guys are interested, please go to our docs. Uh, please go to our Discord, which is also in our homepage link. Uh, if you guys have any questions or support, or if you just want to talk to some really cool devs building some really cool stuff on, on, uh, on Unstoppable and on the decentralized web. Cool. Thanks, guys.